What makes Waimata Valley unique is not its spread of farms, but what lies within them. Mud volcanoes are a special feature of the valley that has existed for years. And now a Gisborne Herald reporter, Avnish Vincent, joins Murray Cave, a principal scientist from the Gisborne District Council, on one such site to explore the reason behind the phenomena and its relation to other geological aspects. So you're actually trying to combine all the different pieces of information we've got. The fact that we've got rocks from 10 plus kilometres down all the way through to the surface. Um, so it means it's scra- scraping off all the stuff as it's coming up and then pushing it out quite vigorously. You know, five hours for this to occur is a very, very short period of time. And um, But the key thing about it is that you know, we now know that these things happen in a hurry. It was a Tuesday afternoon when we arrived at Merv Utting's farm, located at the northern end of the Waimata Valley. As we stood outside the fence engulfing the farm, Dr. Cave pointed to an elevated part of the green fields that looked like a dome covered with white mud. What you see here is the diapir, which is a distinct topography of the mud volcano, and which has been forced up along the fault zones running up the hills, he said. Unlike igneous volcanoes, which are driven by molten rocks called magma, mud volcanoes are driven by hot water and natural gas whereby the force of the gas, for example, could cause rocks and mud to shoot outwards in an eruption, along with methane and other gases. While the eruption of Utting's farm happened back in December 2018, it is still considered to be active. Dr. Cave says he was not surprised to find that a mud volcano had erupted at the location. Prior to the site's eruption three years ago, the council had already mapped the area in 2017 using GIS technology such as LiDAR and drones. While mapping the valley area, we coincidentally managed to fly over this area as well. And we could see a whole lot of cracks in the ground. And after having a look at that, we decided to come here to inspect. So our use of aerial technology has been quite significant to understand what's going on, he said. Mud volcanoes have been known to exist in the area for years, such as in the Savages family site in the valley dating back to 2003. Dr. Cave said they, however, did not anticipate a new one. Back on site, as we came closer to the bubbling volcano, Dr. Cave said based on the projectiles he had found on the ground, the eruption must have at least gone 100 meters up in the air before it simmered down to a porridge-like texture. We could actually smell hydrocarbons um, immediately after the event, and so you had that sort of sulfurish, you know, petroly type smell. And so that meant with a head, we did have higher hydrocarbons here. Um, based on my experience, I would have thought that we were getting up to the propanes and butanes, so which are the wet gases. Um, we didn't see any signs of oil anywhere around here, um, which we can, um, Get in some cases we've had overseas where there is actually oil directly associated with it, but not here. We haven't seen that yet. Dr. Cave said, as per the rocks found on site, the eruption looked as if the rocks ejected from about 10 kilometers under the ground. But with traces of boron found, it could mean it potentially could have come deeper than previously estimated. What it means is that it probably comes deep below the crust, he said. While the area was still under study by the council and now a centre of research for some university students, Dr. Cave says much is yet to be learned about these features. We probably know about 20% of what we should know um, and um, it's been a bit of a neglected area. Um, nobody much was looking at mud volcanoes in this area until I came here five or so years ago, and um, all of a sudden there's interest in them again. Interestingly, it was about two years after the Te Araroa earthquake in 2016 that had hit the country, had also caused an upliftment in Utting's farm by around one metre. At that time, we thought, okay, that's cool. The area got uplifted up the fault in that earthquake. Now, we just know it was a precursor two years later, and that tells us something that we didn't know beforehand. Mapping showed that mud volcanoes associated with east-west oriented faults reactivated after the Te Ararua earthquake, while those associated with more north-south oriented faults remained dormant. With mud volcano activity being closely linked to earthquakes in the region, the phenomena is one of the features that could be associated with fault moving, especially 
in East Coast. Dr. Cave said about 20 mud volcanoes exist in the region alone, and most of them indirectly were all associated with the Hikurangi Fault, which is 20 km offshore from the region. This is what makes these so unique for the region here, he said. Dr. Caves showed me around how the volcanic eruption caused some physical changes in the environment. He pointed at a lake which he says was once a stream and now was a characteristic of a wetland and trees near the site which had a skeletal look. Dr. Cave says this is because the hydrocarbons which is released by the eruption is associated with high salinity. Only the trees that are salt tolerant such as natives planted in the coastal environment would normally be able to survive here. Although we are not quite sure what makes mud volcanoes salty, but that's the reason why you don't see anything grow on it since its eruption, he said. But he tells me the site also makes a good research field for petrology, study of rocks, and is an essential component of geology. But he says in the past few years, the council has been more inviting to students to come and study more about special features like these in the region. It's not just surfing. We have mud volcanoes as well, which is quite cool.